Okay, if you're brand new to the Affinity range, then possibly when you open Affinity Designer, which this is the program, my favorite program in the Affinity range, uh, you might be asking, okay, so if I want to do any sort of pixel editing, I have to go across to the photo version. Either I've got to go to Affinity Photo uh, or a kind of Photoshop or Luminar or something, or something like that and go and tweak the pixels and come back here. Um, now, if you have Affinity Photo, you can just go to File and say Edit in Photo and go do the tweaks there. But something that's often overlooked uh, is the pixel persona. And I just want to cover one or two small areas that I think are quite valuable that often people get started and they never look at it and they kind of just, you know, pop the thing out of Affinity Designer to go trace out areas and then come back in here. Let's pop over to the pixel persona which is a, a sort of downgraded version of the Affinity Photo. Now, by me saying downgraded, I don't mean it's full Affinity Photo and it's, you know, a small percentage of it. What I mean is it's got a few key features there that you'd probably just want to do inside this ecosystem and not necessarily move it to, to the Affinity Photo as such. Okay, so if you go to the Persona, this is one element that I think... Um, you'd be happy to find here yeah, is the ability to do selections. Now, um, you can do your conventional selections. That's that selection, etc. The ones you might be familiar with. Um, the freehand one you might be familiar with where you kind of just draw freehands and it makes the selection. But often you don't look at this type area here. And one of the key ones I just want to highlight here is the magnetic one. It's got a, a, a lovely magnetic setting. So, all, you know, you wouldn't use it on every image that you're trying to trace. So this one has got a clear white background. So it's just for purposes of showing you when you've got different color backgrounds, you might struggle with the magnetic tool because it doesn't know where to grab. In this case here, if I go to the magnetic tool, you'll see it goes into, you know, the add mode, subtract the usual there. Tool. And this is the one that I want to actually highlight is the fact that once you make a selection, you can do a refinement of that selection to create your mask. So let's just show you quickly. I'm going to zoom in. If I had to use the magnetic here, uh, you would click and you can see it hopping. Now I'm going to zoom. You can see how beautifully it, it jumps into that area. And you just hover over here. Now, of course, I am doing this on a white background, so it, it snaps very nicely. Okay, so you, you'll go around and where it chops over don't worry too much so i'm just going to go grossly here yeah? and remember all i'm doing is dragging it it's automatically i'm just keeping it on the white area i mean i'm not even going to do mega refinements i'm just look at this it's just a a wild pull through in the white and as i have to classify again there's no other contrasting thing so this would be an ideal thing to to run it through when it comes to this intricate area i'll leave that to tracing just now i'll show you so there we go we go maybe into that area oops there we go and i have to still see a magnetic tool that works so seamlessly most magnetic tools will hop in and you've got to set sensitivity and all that there's no sensitivity setting here it just does the best uh, uh, contrasting adjustments that are there Okay, so that was with the freehand tool, and that was pretty much it. If I didn't use the freehand tool, I could use the selection brush and just go as per normal, and it will do the selection. But let me show you here now. When you go to refine, there we go. And the ref what the refine is doing is where I tweaked over the edges here like this. It might do a refine, but if I'm not happy with that, I can go square bracket and just draw over this area. It will do that definition and pull it out in that area okay and everything that is usually found in the refined section like these mats and the ramps and feathers and that is available here and this is all inside affinity designer inside a vector program you're able to do this okay i'm going to just go black and white and see that so let me just pull this out i'm going to just mark that area try and get a a better reading there um, okay if we ramp it pull a ramp a bit back see what we're doing border with anyhow I, i'm not going to sit and tweak too much here um, i'm sure we'll be able to get some sort of settings there okay so 
you can spend some time doing a bit of refining in that area. But the point I want to get to is just showing you that you have the ability to do the refining process in this application. Okay, so we have it over there. I'm going to just pop this back to overlay. Um, yes, yeah, same thing here is if you look at the black and white, it's not very clear there. But if we, if we run this across there, we might get a bit of a better result. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Nice clear result. So here also we're going to just run it on the edge. See what we get. There we get a lovely much better result there. And if you go for transparency, that's what we've got. Okay, so this is a, I mean, we're talking about this is inside vector editing program. No switching out to any other program. So for those of you who have been jumping to photo all the time to do your cutouts, maybe this is a better way of getting to do it. I used to go to photo all the time until I thought like, no man, it, I should just look at using tools that are here. If it doesn't exist here, then of course we go to photo. So then let's go back to overlay and then you know, I'm not going to even fiddle with the rest. I'm going to just say, let's create a new mask layer and apply. And there we have it. Okay, so it's still got our original and then it's just created a duplicate of that. And there we have our, our cutout area. Okay, so I think the two things that I just wanted to highlight is this magnetic tool. Of course, you use discreetly. Uh, then your ability to do the refine process uh, to be able to then refine it to what you want to. Once you have it there, we click back here. So remember your selection and your uh, masking and different selection tools are all available in this program. Um, I'm going to delete this here now and just show you how we'd go. An other option would be to go there and then we can go with the normal selection tool. Same story, we can just drag over it brackets left to make it smaller this is probably better in this sense because we you know we don't have any discrepancies uh, press alt to do a bit of a, a minus here oh where are we taking this to um, i'm going to smaller bracket and keep the alt down just to do a subtraction And add a bit there. Okay, so there's, there's different ways of doing the selection. Uh, like I said, I want to show you how we can get that area also by using Refine. So let me make this bracket a bit bigger. And Alt. Okay, here we've got some bleed area in here. So it's the usual marking of areas. There are ears and been caught in there. Um, so that's a, a quick way of getting it if you wanted to choose that method of of marking the areas and then you'd go to refine okay and that's pretty much it and go through the same procedure as you see it's not covered properly we can just use the refine tool and just draw that area touching the the areas that we want to preserve and you'll see it will go look at the same here just draw over there it determines what we want to cut out what the background is same again here that we did the last time and back there okay this area is also a bit suspect so we just draw over that area and let the refine tool do its job and then let's go back to ask layer and there we're sitting with the image okay and if we have any area that's uh, suspect we can always go work on the mask itself okay and then we back in this area and that's happy days then we have our marking so once again selections creating these masks and using it inside uh, designer is a breeze if you go into the pixel persona and then you have your images really cut out and nice to work with okay hopefully that has given you a nice quick tip and you get to utilize it more than just jumping out of the program to your photo editing one so have a fantastic day and god bless